A couple of local cops thought that they'd give me a warm welcome to their town, tied me to a lamppost in the middle of the street, putting on a show like I was just another nobody. Little did they know who they were really messing with or how this would blow up in their faces. Let's start from the beginning. So, here's the deal. Name's Danny, 54, been around the block a few times, just moved to this little middle of nowhere town in South Carolina to take up the badge as chief of police. Not my first rodeo, seen plenty in my time, but this place had a vibe like no other. Everyone knew each other, and they didn't exactly seem thrilled about fresh faces. It didn't take long to notice. The cops around here seemed to enjoy keeping their own rule book, if you know what I mean. First day before reporting in, I thought I'd take a stroll, see what I was dealing with. So there I was, blending in with my worn out cap and an old jacket. Just another guy on the street, walked into this local cafe, the kind of place that looks like it's been around longer than me. The second I stepped in, I felt a dozen eyes on me. You know, the classic, you don't belong here vibe. Two cops, sitting in the corner, were laughing their heads off about something, but I could tell I was the punchline. They kept sneaking looks my way, sizing me up, like they'd already decided I was a nobody worth ignoring or, worse, worth messing with. Their badges practically sparkled in the dim light, but their manners? Not so much. I ordered a coffee, played it cool, just to see how they'd react. I didn't plan on revealing who I was just yet. No, this was a recon mission. But then, just as I took my coffee to go, one of them barked at me from across the room. Hey, old man, you lost or something? Cause you sure don't look local. I half turned, kept my expression blank. Just passing through, I replied, though clearly they weren't buying it. One of them, tall guy with a smug grin, shot back. Well, maybe keep passing. Strangers don't last long around here if you get my drift. I just shrugged and walked out, but believe me, I could feel them watching every step I took down that street. Something told me my new job was about to be way more than just paperwork and meetings. Next morning, I decided to go for a run just outside of town, clear my head and get a feel for the place. Fresh air, a little peace, nothing out of the ordinary. About halfway through though, I heard the sound of a patrol car pulling up alongside me. Yep, it was those same two from the cafe, JK and Mike, the dynamic duo. Jake, the tall, wiry blonde with that smirk of his, leaned out the window and shouted, Hey runner, you lost? The way he said it, you'd think I'd just run onto some private property with a no trespassing sign slapped across my forehead. His partner, Mike, a bulky guy who looked like he could bench press half a car, chimed in, Yeah, are you sure you're welcome around here? I kept my cool, slowed down a bit, and replied, Just going for a run. Pretty sure that's still allowed around here, right? Mike shot me a grin. One of those smug, I know something you don't kinds of looks. Allowed? Maybe. But strangers don't exactly get the warmest welcome here, especially those who don't know our rules. Before I could even open my mouth to ask what on earth that was supposed to mean, they hopped out of the car. Jake stepped up close, way too close, and started patting down my pockets without so much as a may I. I took a breath, keeping myself calm. They started rummaging around, throwing smug glances back at each other like this was some kind of game. Jake finally pulled out some random scrap of plastic from my pocket, his face lighting up with some twisted excitement. Well, well, look what we have here, he sneered, holding it up like it was some kind of trophy. This yours? I just stared at him, not taking the bait. It was pretty obvious they'd had this little setup planned. All right, so by this point, I'd had just about enough of their friendly welcome. But I knew I had to keep my cool. They had no idea who I was, and this definitely wasn't the moment for a big reveal. I played it calm, even as they each grabbed one of my arms and yanked me toward the center of town. No explanations, no questions, just dragging me along like I was some lost pet they'd found roaming the streets. They hauled me right over to this big lamppost in the middle of town square, where folks were milling around, doing their usual morning routines. A few people stopped, curious, Others didn't seem surprised at all, like they'd seen this kind of scene before. Jake and Mike looked like they were putting on some sort of twisted show, cracking jokes like they were at a comedy club. Ladies and gentlemen, Jake announced with a mocking bow. We got ourselves a real big city troublemaker here. Mike, playing along, added, Yep, think he's got a few tricks up his sleeve, or maybe in his pockets. They tied my hands around that lamppost, real dramatic, making sure everyone could see. 
Some folks started pulling out their phones, recording like this was the highlight of their day. Others just chuckled, shaking their heads. I could see Jake soaking it all in, looking around at his audience with the smirk that made my stomach turn. He leaned in close, loud enough for everyone to hear, and sneered, Looks like we got ourselves a troublemaker, huh? Can't have people like you just waltzing into our town. The whole thing was beyond ridiculous, but it wasn't funny. It was disturbing. These guys were so into their act, they didn't even care how obvious their setup looked. I'd seen some low moves in my day, but this? This was something else. I had to remind myself to stay calm, just let them dig their own hole. So there I was, tied to that lamppost like I was some kind of public attraction, while Jake and Mike strutted around like they'd just bagged the year's biggest catch. They didn't even try to keep it low key. These guys were basking in the attention. People had their phones out, filming from every angle, chuckling, shaking their heads. Some folks even looked genuinely curious, probably wondering what the deal was with this outsider in their town. Turns out, that little scene didn't stay a local secret for long. By the next morning, clips of the mysterious stranger tied to the pole were blowing up online. Comments were flooding in, and boy, did the theories start rolling. Some people thought I was a drifter who'd crossed the wrong lines. Others were straight up calling out the cops, asking, who's this guy and why does he look like he's stuck in some old Wild West showdown? People wanted answers and fast. Pretty soon, local news caught wind of it. A few journalists showed up looking for their next big scoop and they were relentless. You could see them pushing through the crowd, mics out, looking to catch a quote or two. One of them even cornered a bystander asking, what did this man do? Did anyone see him commit a crime? The response was a shrug and a muttered, beats me. Looks like the cops are just having some fun. Meanwhile, Jake and Mike were still riding their high, pacing around like they owned the square. They'd pose, crack jokes, make a real scene of it, like they were local celebrities. If only they knew how fast this story was spiraling out of their control. Watching it all unfold, I couldn't help but feel a spark of anticipation. They were giving me exactly what I needed, setting the stage perfectly without even realizing it. The spotlight was on, and soon enough, the real show was about to start. After a long night, and trust me, it felt like the longest night ever, my phone rang early in the morning. Caller ID showed it was the main office, and I knew exactly why they were calling. Word had reached up the chain, and they weren't happy. This little town's idea of fun was now a full-blown scandal, and Jake and Mike were about to get one rude awakening. I walked into the station, calm and collected, feeling the weight of my uniform as I put it on. This wasn't just another day at the office. This was my moment to set things straight. With my badge gleaming and my uniform crisp, I made my way to the main hall. You could almost hear the tension building up in the air, like the calm before a storm. And just as expected, in walked Jake and Mike, laughing about some inside joke, not a care in the world. They hadn't even bothered to check who I really was. They just assumed I was some nobody they could mess with. But the second they spotted me, standing there in full uniform, they froze. I could see the shock spreading across their faces, slowly transforming into something that looked a lot like panic. I let the silence stretch, watched them squirm, their eyes darting around like they were searching for an escape. Finally, I broke the silence, keeping my voice calm but firm. We've got ourselves a situation, gentlemen, I started, looking them dead in the eyes, and you're both right in the middle of it. The color drained from their faces as they processed what was happening. This was a scene they hadn't scripted, a game where they had no control. Jake stammered something, trying to come up with an excuse, but I raised a hand to stop him. Save it, Jake, I said, my tone cold. I've seen enough to know exactly what's been going on here. I took a step closer, looked Jake and Mike square in the eyes and asked, so what, neither of you recognized your new chief? The room went dead silent. You could practically feel everyone holding their breath like they were watching a slow motion train wreck they couldn't look away from. A few of the other officers started glancing at each other wide eyed, finally putting two and two together. Jake and Mike though? They stood there frozen, trying way too hard to look confident, but their expressions were giving it all away. They were cornered and they knew it. I pulled out my phone and hit play on the video, their little performance from yesterday, complete with all their smirks and mocking comments. I held it up for the whole room to see. 
In case anyone here is confused, this is what went down. These two thought they'd have a little fun at the expense of some stranger, without even bothering to check who I was. The rest of the team watched in stunned silence. You could see the shock turn into something closer to disgust as they realized how far these guys had taken things. Jake looked like he was about to say something, maybe try to explain himself, but then he did something I didn't see coming. Instead of apologizing, Jake squared his shoulders, lifted his chin, and said, Look, this is just how things work here. Tradition, you know. We have a little fun with the outsiders, keeps people in line. His voice had this defiant edge, like he still thought he had the upper hand. I raised an eyebrow. Tradition? So you've got a tradition of publicly humiliating people just because they're new in town? Jake smirked, looking around the room for support. It's not hurting anyone, just a bit of harmless fun. I glanced around, saw the rest of the team watching this unfold, their expressions a mix of disbelief and discomfort. They were starting to realize just how deep this went. And for Jake and Mike, the reality of the situation was finally sinking in. Their little tradition had just met its end right there in that room. Within days, Jake and Mike's little act had blown up like a summer wildfire. This wasn't just local gossip anymore. The story was everywhere, from city talk shows to state news channels. Reporters were camping outside the station, and cameras seemed to be everywhere, flashing and rolling, ready to capture every last detail. The town had never seen anything like it, and honestly, neither had I. The community was livid. Folks who used to turn a blind eye or chuckle at Jake and Mike's antics were now demanding accountability. People were marching outside the station, carrying signs, calling for justice. It was like a storm brewing that no one had seen coming, and it wasn't about to let up until those two faced the music. I called a meeting and gathered the whole team in the main hall. This wasn't going to be a quiet warning or a polite reminder. This was me drawing a line. I looked around the room, my gaze landing on each officer, making it clear this wasn't just about Jake and Mike anymore. From this point on, I said, voice steady but firm, any behavior that disrespects the people in this community will be met with immediate termination. No warnings, no second chances. There was a silence as everyone took it in, realizing that things were about to change in a big way. Jake and Mike stood off to the side, their faces pale as it dawned on them that their little game was over. They weren't untouchable anymore, and everyone knew it. Without another word, I reached into my pocket, pulled out two termination forms, and signed them right there for everyone to see. Jake, Mike, hand over your badges. Your time here is done. The entire room watched as I handed the papers to them. There were no cheers, no applause, just a heavy silence as they took off their badges, their faces showing that they finally understood the gravity of what they'd done. The message was clear. From now on, the town's officers were there to serve and respect every single resident, not to treat them as a sideshow. After Jake and Mike's hasty exit from the force, the real fallout began. The prosecutor's office jumped in, determined to get to the bottom of whatever traditions these two had been running. They started digging into every arrest, every questionable call Jake and Mike had made, and believe me, it didn't take long before they had a mountain of complaints and accusations piling up. People who'd stayed silent for years were finally stepping forward, sharing stories about how they'd been humiliated, bullied, and worse, all for Jake and Mike's twisted version of fun. It was like a floodgate had opened, and suddenly the whole town was talking. This wasn't just about one incident anymore. It was about setting things right for everyone they'd wronged. Pretty soon, the courtroom became the center stage, with people demanding justice, compensation, you name it. Jake and Mike were facing more than just a pink slip. They were looking at serious consequences. The town was finally getting a glimpse of what real accountability looked like, and it was clear they weren't about to let these two off easy. Standing outside the station, watching the community come together, I knew this was exactly why I'd taken the job. This town was ready for change, even if it took a little shaking up to get there. The message was loud and clear. The days of turning a blind eye were over. I took a deep breath, feeling a sense of peace, knowing we'd turned a corner. The fight for respect and justice didn't end with Jake and Mike. This was just the beginning. The town now understood that things were different, and I was here to make sure they stayed that way.